Hello, I'm going to show you today how to make a database connection for a Visual Basic.net project to an access database or it will work for other databases but you'll have to work out your own connection screens. So first of all, um, what I'm looking at is a very simple login screen. Uh, I've got a username, a password and a login button and what I want to be able to do is I want to go here, I want to type my username in, I want to type a password in, don't ever use this password, I want to click login and it's going to tell me whether I can log in or not. Um, now at the moment as you can see it doesn't work, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to a database, um, here's my little database, and you've got a couple of users here, uh, with a username and with a password. And if they exist with the username and exist with a password it will let them in, if they don't, um, well it won't. So we need to, to get this working we need to connect it to a database. Um, and we're going to have to do a couple of things to get that working. First of all, let's make sure our form is nice and prepared. So if I go to the name of these little boxes, they're called text box one, that's a not a good name. We should be calling it something like txt uh, username, the username. And uh, here we go, this one, txt password for the password. Now with those two things, um, we're ready to go. Now, you can use the inbuilt settings, the wizards, but that's going to lose you a lot of marks. What we're going to do is we're going to create a module or a class uh, to do this for us. Now remember, if you make one class or one module, you can reuse it throughout your entire project, so you don't have to keep rewriting the same code. I'm going to make a class and stick with the naming convention, which is going to put CLL, CLS in the front, uh, DB connector on the end. So there we go. We have a new class called class DB connector. Now, to get this working, um, we're going to have to declare some variables and we're going to have to import some code. Out of the box, Visual Basic doesn't allow you to connect to databases. You need to import some code, uh, some library files, uh, and they sit in system data.oledb, and that will allow you to connect to databases. Uh, we're also going to have to set up some variables of our own, which is bin connection as new OEL. So OLEDB connection. Um, that's going to allow us to connect to the database. Uh, DB provider. Now these are, sorry, bin DB provider. Uh, this is going to allow me to set up my string, my connection string, and make sure that I'm connecting to the right database, uh, the right version of the software, and the right location. And then we're going to DB source, and uh, that will store where your database is sitting and obviously for you it's going to be different to the one that I'm using. We're going to need some other things as well. We're going to need a data adapter, so DA as OLE D oops, keep forgetting my bins. OLE uh, DB dot data adapter. That allows me to actually run queries and insert, delete, update, select, that sort of stuff. Uh, on a database, and we're going to have another last thing, which is bin ds, which is a data set which returns the values. Now remember, for this we've got to put the word new, otherwise it's going to go through because it's angry. Um, data set. Okay. So we seem to be okay so far, um, but obviously this database connection is not doing very much. We want it to connect to the database, and to do that we're going to create another routine uh, called sub connect very inventive here, let's make some space, subconnect, and we're going to set up some uh, some connection string information here. So the provider, uh, this is information about um, who has provided the database that you're using, and that's actually going to be for us, microsoft.ace.oeldb.12.0 and then you must remember to put your little semicolon on the end. Number 12 is for, I believe, um, Office 2007, which is what I'm using, and also 2010. Anything lower will have different numbers. You've really got to find out what that connection is. Sometimes they're JET, or maybe I think Office 2003 uses JET instead of ACE. Um, so make sure you get your provider information absolutely correct. If you don't, it is not going to work for you. DB source equals um, and this is where your database is currently living. Data source, well my database is currently living on my C drive. Um, let me have a quick look, there we go. My database is living here, and you need to give the full name of the, of the location and the name of the file as well. So we need to have a little slash there, and 
if we have a quick look, mine's called user. So let's go put user on there, and of course we're going to get the extension. With older versions of Visual, uh, sorry, with older versions of Access, you're going to have uh, different extensions. So MDB, for example, if you're using Office 2000 or Office 2003. ACCDB is what you use for 2007, and I also believe for 2010. Um, but please correct me if I'm wrong with that. But that's my database name. So it's all ready to connect, but of course I haven't done any code to actually get it to connect yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our connection, um, and we're going to set the connection string to equal these two things stuck together. Provider stuck next to the DB source, like so. And that there is our connection string, which should work. And all we need to do now do is go open, and that will open a connection to our database. So far, so good. Um, what we need to do is go back to our form. Here's our form. If I double click on it, the first thing we want this form to do when it loads, and remember you can also get this under the events menu here, load, when it loads, is we want to create uh, a database connection. And what we're going to do is we need to create an object of the class DB Connector. Um, so we're going to have din DB as new DB Connector. There we go. And we're also going to have a data set here as well, which we're going to use to store any results that come back from our database connector and um, obviously look at the data, use the data, display the data, delete the data, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so we need another data set here, which, as I said before, as new data set. Lovely. So when we log in, all we need to do is say db.connect. And if I press play, hopefully, yeah, well, no complaints so far. So let's presume it's working. It doesn't do very much so far. What we want it to do is we want it to start querying databases. And um, what I want it to be doing is I want it to be querying my database and finding out if this person here exists. If they do, it's going to return some values. If they don't, it's not going to return anything. So let's have a quick think about this. Um, when I double click on the login, so when I click on the login button, we want it to run a query and um, select some values that meet some criteria. If it meets those criteria, we let them in. If it doesn't, it won't let them in. So let's double click on login. So this is the uh, the button click thing. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have dim SQL. We're going to have a little bit of SQL here, which we're going to use to build up a string um, to query the database. So the SQL is going to equal. We're going to select everything from what's the name of this ta database table? So for example, called TBL users from TBL users, where well, we're going to select the ones that have the correct username and the password. So where username again, you can use you can have a look here. We've got username and we've got password. Where username equals. Um, let's have a quick look. It's going to equal txt. Oh, wrong one. Txt username dot text. Okay. So where the username equals username dot text, and of course we've got the and section in here, which is that's true. And password equals, and then we'll dump the password on there as well. So txt password dot text. Lovely. Um, let's just check that this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just get this on the screen for a second. Message box, and we're just going to get the SQL dump from the screen, and we're going to see what actually happens. So, um, okay, no information at the moment. So let's put uh, J Kubel, J Kubel, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and that should return some values. And this is the uh, SQL that's going to be used. Um, does that look okay? Have a little think. What's wrong with that? There is something wrong with this. And the thing that's wrong with this is these are strings. If these are strings, we need to have little speech marks either side. Speech mark there, speech mark there, there and there. So let's go add those speech marks. So we come back here, add a little speech mark here, add a little speech mark here, add a little speech mark here, and we need one on the end as well. So it's quite good. You can obviously use breakpoints as well. Um, I'm using a message box. Breakpoints are probably smarter. Um, if I go press start, 
uh, you'll now see this. So again, J Kibo, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, that's looking pretty solid to me. That looks like a nice little select point there. Um, so we're ready to run with it. And, uh, but how on earth do we run with it? Well, there's, there's no way of querying in here at the moment. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a query inside um, our database connector. So subroutine, sorry, not the a function, because we want to return the values. Function, SQL select, and we're going to pass byval the, by the SQL that we've just written. Okay. In fact, I'll just call it SQL string. So the SQL string that we've just written here, we want to pass to the SQL select function. And to get it working, we've got a couple of little things to do. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our database adapter, which we've declared up here, database adapter, and we're going to be um, setting up a new database adapter. Um, and we're going to be running the SQL string and we're going to be running it against that connection. So the database adapter is going to run that SQL that gets passed to it against the connection to this database and um, then we're going to return the values by do.fill, which means we're going to set the data set to equal um, with a table of results coming from that query. And then finally, when we've got the results together, uh, we're going to just return that data set back to the program. So SQL select uh, takes the SQL, it runs against the connection, it fills up the data set with some results, and then returns the results. Um, so we go back here, we go back to our login form, and all we're going to do now is we're going to say db dot, and now we can db select, and we run the SQL that we've just written above, and um, when it gets returned, it gets returned to the data set, like so. So, that, if we run correctly, should return some values. So what we'll do, just to check that it's working, we'll have message box ds.tables. We're going to have the results coming back from it. And we're going to return the first row, and uh, we're going to return, let's just return item 0 for the moment. What that's going to do, if it runs correctly, if we type in jkeeble 12456, it's going to return id, which is, as you can see, the 0 column, so it's going to return id 1. Let's see if this works. So we go here, jkeeble, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, log in, and as you can see it returns 1. Fantastic, I hear you say. But we've also got a little problem, because if I try j yeah, jasper, uh, or jasper, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, it should return 2. It returns 1. What on earth is going on? This is a little bit strange. Maybe it's just broken. It's not. It's actually working, but the problem is... This results that you got back, returned from the select query, doesn't write it overwrite itself. So each time you run the query, it keeps filling up more and more and more and more results. And the first item is always going to be um, keyboard if you query keyboard first. That's not what we want. What we actually want to do is we want to reset this data set so when it returns, we only return uh, the last query that's been run. So we need a, another little function in here called reset. And this is actually quite simple. Just stop that for a moment. Sub reset. Okay, simple as that. And what we're going to say is we're going to say, uh, let me get this right. We're going to say dataset dot reset. Easy. So once you are here again, let's go back to that bottom. Um, once you've run the query, you've got your answer. We're going to have uh, db dot reset, which will clear the information. Let's go and run that now. So let's try this again. We've got 
Jay Keeble, 133456, log in. That gives you person number one, so that works. And we're going to try, um, I'm going to forget their names. Here we go. Hey Jasper, hey Jasper, and we're going to return 233234, and that should. As you can see, should return to. Let's see what happens now. Ooh, there's no position, uh, no information in position zero. Did I just type that in wrongly? Let's have a quick look. Um, let's go back to it. These things never work on the first time. J Keeble. One, two, three, four, five, six. Run. Run to one. That's perfect. And we're gonna have uh, Jasper. Let's just make sure this is right. K Jaspers. K Jaspers. And we're going to run that with two, one, two, three, four of them, with a four on the end, and that should return ID number two, which it does. Okay, so that now works. And if we get the password wrong, it breaks. And that's what you're going to have to try and solve, I'm afraid, folks, because that thing there is um, very important. If it breaks, you need to give them an error message and stop them logging in because they've got the wrong username and password. Well, I hope that's enough to get you started. Um, and yeah, keep watching.